for humanity. It's not just that 20,000 Palestinians were killed. Israel has committed murder in Gaza 20,000 times. 2023 was a year of failure and of defeat for the Zionist occupation and for the White House and for the U.S. imperialist military across the world. This is Natalia with People's Dispatch. Right now I'm here marching down Fifth Avenue with thousands of people in the middle of Manhattan who are protesting the ongoing Israeli genocide in Gaza. Right now, almost 22,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israel on the Gaza Strip. Right now, Biden himself, who has expressed unconditional support to Israel and has sent many weapons to Israel, even bypassing congressional approval, is facing increasing pressure here in his own country to eliminate all foreign aid to Israel, with 55% of registered voters against sending additional military aid to the Zionist state. Here in this march, protesters are demanding a permanent ceasefire, an end to the occupation, an end to the siege on Gaza, release of Palestinian political prisoners, and of course, the full liberation of Palestine from the Zionist state. presidential candidate for the Party for Socialism and Liberation here at the March for Palestine in New York City. Claudia, why are you out here today? I think everybody should be out here while people are shopping and businesses continue as usual for capitalists. Our, our siblings, our brothers and sisters in Palestine continue to be killed, murdered by the thousands. We can't sit by and allow that to happen, especially as people living in the United States. We have a responsibility to be able to contribute to the liberation of Palestine, contribute to the liberation of all those countries that are oppressed and are being killed by U.S. empire and by colonialism. Israel is a terrorist state. We have no, we should have no mercy for genocide. We should have, genocide should not be happening across the world, nor in Gaza or anywhere. And so we are here to demand a ceasefire, but more so, we are fighting for the total liberation of Palestine. Your campaign has been one of the most outspoken in support of Palestine. Why do you think that's important? It's very important. Again, we have a historical responsibility as people who are living within the belly of the beast. People who, whether we want it or not, our U.S. tax dollars are contributing to the murder of people across the seas. And so for us, it's a matter of principle and it's a matter of responsibility to stand with the people of Palestine until they're free. Free Palestine! I'm here with Mohammed from the MIT Graduate Students Union. Mohammed, can you talk about why it's important for workers to show up to marches like this? It's because the labor struggle is connected to the Palestine struggle. All these weapons that are flowing into Israel that are used for this genocide can be stopped if the workers united, if they worked on the ports and stopped arming the ships and working on the ships and transporting the labor. So our labor can't go towards genocide. Can you talk a little bit about how right-wing forces have been trying to censor the struggle for Palestine on college campuses? There's been many tactics trying to suspend students, donors threatening to pull out, and donors trying to pressure administrations to suspend us for exercising our rights to protest, freedom of speech, and assembly. How are the MIT workers and other workers across college campuses trying to organize against this? At MIT, we have the Scientists Against Apartheid Pledge, where many MIT students are signing up to say that our labor will not go towards MIT projects funded by the Israeli Ministry of Defense. Currently, there are eight projects at MIT funded by the Israeli Ministry of Defense. Today, once again, the enemy wants us to believe that the Palestinian people have been defeated. Here in the belly of the beast, they want you to believe that the movement is unimportant. <coughs> that our protests have no impact and are detached from the struggle back home. If this is true, then why is Netanyahu crying about the protests Talk in the world? It. In 2023, the Zionist forces showed us that they are afraid of children. They showed us that they are afraid of the dignified people of Gazdeh. That's 
right. who have decided and who have shown the world that the only way to live is to live in dignity. Yes. yes. And to do that, we need liberation. Come on. Mm -hmm. 2023 was the year that the entire world rose up against Israel and against U.S. imperialism. I'm here with Ana Guava from Uptown for Palestine. Ana, can you tell me a bit about the work that you guys are doing? Yes. So Uptown for Palestine is a collective that organizes Washington Heights, Inwood, and the Bronx. So Uptown is a very diverse community, and part of those communities is the Puerto Rican diaspora, which, as we know, um, is in a perpetual um, colonial oppressive state. And so Palestinians and Puerto Ricans know well what it is to struggle against the U.S. imperialist, colon, colonialist um, power. 